In this lesson, we're going to take a look at pH, pOH, and logarithms. Now, logarithms are a tool that we use to help us determine the concentration of hydronium and hydroxide ions. We're going to spend a couple minutes going through those. I'm going to give you the basics, introduce what they are. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with them, and then we'll really get into pH and pOH. First, let's do a quick review of some acid-based stuff. We know that acids produce hydronium, bases produce hydroxide. Uh, and we know that the concentration of hydronium times hydroxide is a constant uh, because all aqueous solutions um, are going to have these things and at equilibrium they're going to come to the equilibrium constant which we call Kw for water uh, and that is um, 1 times 10 to the negative 14th at least for water at 25 degrees Celsius. Now in a neutral solution we're going to have equal amounts of those, right? So water auto ionizes and for every hydroxide we get a hydronium. But for acidic solutions we actually get extra H3O plus. For basic solutions we get extra OH minus and then uh, these concentrations can actually go through a huge range. So if I add hydrochloric acid into this, that drives this concentration way, 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 way up and this concentration way, way down. And we're talking on the order of times 10 to the 14th difference, so really big numbers. And when we have ranges that cover from 0 times 10 to the 14th, we're going to use a log scale to express the concentration because a log scale lets us use small numbers to represent big numbers or really, really little numbers as well. So a log is actually a logarithm, and it's the inverse function of exponentiation. Now an exponent, remember, is a power. So 10 to the x, we've, we've raised 10 to the power of x. This is the exponentiation. Um, and an inverse function undoes what a function does. So if I take the log of 10 to the x, I should get out x. But what if I took the log of 4 to the x, would I still get out x? Well, since these numbers are different, the values need to be different. And so what we actually see is the log of a number is the exponent to which a fixed number, which we call the base, must be raised to produce that number. Now, uh, in algebra, you'll deal with logs of lots of different things. You'll have like log base 0, log base 0, really? There's no such thing. In algebra, you'll deal with logs with lots of different bases, you might do log 2, 3, 4, there's natural log, which is log base e, but we're going to use common log, which is log base 10. So what we're always dealing with is the power to which 10 must be raised to get a number. And so if the number we want is 1,000, then the x we get is 3. So that means the log of 1,000 is equal to 3, because 10 to the 3 is a thousand. So in general, the log base b of x equals y implies b to the y equals x. So taking the log of something lets me find the power to which 10 must be raised in order to get that number. Um, like I said, we use common log, which is a log base 10. And the reason we use a log scale is because a change in the log value of 1 is actually a change uh, in value of a power of or magnitude of 10. So the log base 10 of 10 is 1 because 10 to the 1 equals 10 and so this is the log value. 10 squared equals 100 this is the log value. 10 cubed equals 1000 and the cube is the log value. But you'll notice when my log value goes up by 1 my actual value goes up by a magnitude of 10. We get multiplied by 10. So all we have to do is have our scale go from 0 to 14 and we can cover basically the huge range of uh, pH or hydronium concentrations or pH concentration uh, of acids and bases. Now there are a few rules that we can look at with, when using logs. Um, if we have two numbers multiplied together and we take the log of them, then we can actually take the log of the individual numbers and sum them, and those are equivalent. Uh, likewise with division, um, instead of adding we subtract, and with exponentiation we can actually pull the exponent out front and multiply it. So we're going to use this rule in our next slide. It's going to be helpful for doing a lot of the pH and pOH math that we're about to look at. Now, P actually means negative log of. So when I take the P of X, I'm taking the negative log of X. When I take the pH, I'm actually taking the negative log of the concentration of hydronium ions. Now, 
that's helpful because we can use the pH value to figure out the concentration, right? So pH doesn't give me concentration, it gives me the negative log of concentration. So if I want to take uh, the pH value, which we can measure easily using several different probes, and find the concentration, then I need to do a little bit of math, but the math is simple. So what I'm going to do is first divide both sides by negative 1, which gets me negative pH equals log of the concentration of H3O+. plus. But then I'm going to do the inverse of the log function because I don't want log, I just want the concentration. The inverse of the log function is the base raised to that function. So I'm going to take 10 to the power of log H3O+, plus, and 10 to the power of negative pH, which leaves me with 10 to the negative pH equals, and since these are inverses of each other, this is just the concentration of H3O+. Plus. So all I have to do is take 10 to the negative pH value, and I get out the concentration of hydronium ions. Similarly, um, with OH, POH is the concentration of hydroxide ions, and so we have 10 to the negative POH equals the concentration of OH-. minus. This should be a capital O. Okay. Now, I said we were going to apply that base, uh, the log rule here. Since Kw is equal to the concentration of hydroxide times the concentration of hydronium, we can apply the log function to both sides, which I have done here. Remember, P is negative log, and get this. But since these two numbers are multiplied together, it's the same as the logs of their, or yeah, the log of each of them summed. And so what I have is PKW equals POH plus pH. But pKW has just an easy value. Because Kw is 1 times 10 to the negative 14, the power that we're interested in is negative 14, because this is times 10 to the negative 14. So the log of this is going to be negative 14. The negative log of this is actually 14. So what we have is the equation that 14 is equal to pH plus POH. And this is an equilibrium relationship. So this is true for any aqueous solution at 25 degrees. So this says determine the pH of water at 25 degrees. Well, this is not too tricky. What we know is the concentration of OH is equal to the concentration of H3O plus in water. Um, because this is a one-to-one -one relationship, right? When we have the auto-ionization of water, two H2Os break into OH minus and H3O plus. These are one-to-one -one mole ratios, so we get a one-to-one -one value of this. Which means, if I were to do the ice table over here, we don't care about this, it's a pure substance. Uh, we look at this changes by X, this changes by X, and so if I look at my product, it's basically X squared has to equal Kw, and since this is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14th, we square root both sides and we get x is equal to the concentration of each one of these, which is 1 times 10 to the negative 7th. Now I want the p value of that, so I take the negative log of times 10 to the negative 7th, or 10 to the negative 7th, and the negative log just returns the negative of that power. And so the negative of negative 7 is equal to 7. And so the pH is equal to 7 um, for water at 25 degrees. This chart shows the pH and pOH of several different solutions from acids to bases and so we're going to start up here with one more hydrochloric acid. Its pOH value is large and remember a large pOH value means a very small concentration because we're taking we're going to take 10 to the negative 14th 10 to the negative 14th is the OH concentration. That's a really small number. 10 to the 0 is 1. That's a fairly large number compared to this one. So one more hydrochloric acid has a way more hydroxide or hydronium and way less hydroxide. And as we go down the scale, we can see that pH plus pOH is always going to add up to 14, right? Negative 1 plus 15 is 14. 14 and 0 is 14. So these values always add up to 14 no matter what solution we're dealing with with. Um, but as we get more and more acidic, the pH value goes down. As we get more and more basic, the pH value goes up. Because again, down here, this is going to be 10 to the negative 14, and that's a very, very small number, or a very small concentration of hydro hydronium ion. 
Now, let's work a couple more example problems just to get familiar with how pH, pOH works. This says determine the pH and pOH of the following strong acid or base concentrations. Strong means they ionize completely, so we don't have to deal with anything partially ionizing. That's going to get a little bit more complicated. We'll look at that in the next section. But for now, these are going to ionize completely. So when this ionizes, it splits into H plus and ClO4 minus. And this is what we're looking for, right? We're looking for the concentration of hydronium. It does this in water, so that forms uh, hydronium in water. And we're going to get 0 0.0259 moles of that because we have 0 .00 or 0 0.000259 molar uh, acid. And so all we have to do is say, okay, well, I want the negative log of that concentration. So on your calculator, push negative log of 0 0.000259 and see what you get. So negative log 0 0.000259, and we get 3.587. Okay. Oops, 7. So that's the pH. pH equals 3.587. Um, what's the pOH? Well, pOH is just 14 minus that, right? 14 equals pH plus pOH. So all I have to do is subtract that from 14 and I get the pOH is equal to 10.413. Now this makes sense because this is an acid and so the pH value is low, it's on the acid side. Uh, right? Less than, a pH less than 7 is an acid. The pOH is high, again, because it's an acid. Now this is a base and when it breaks apart it breaks into Na plus and OH minus and again it's a one-to-one -one mole ratio so I'm getting one mole of OH for every mole of NaOH, so I'm going to use 0.21. So I'm going to take negative log of 0.21 and I get 0.677. So my um, pOH, and this is OH because we found the concentration of OH, not hydronium, um, but hydroxide, the pOH is equal to 0.677. Uh, eight. Uh, we'll just go with 6, 7, 8. So if I want the pH, I'm just going to subtract that from 14 and get 13.232. Okay. And that makes sense. This is a base, so our pH should be high up near 14, and it is. And then finally, I have this one. This is barium hydroxide. This is a base. But when this ionizes, it splits into Ba2 plus plus two OH minuses, which means we get twice the concentration of hydroxide as barium hydroxide, which means I'm not going to take the negative log of 0 0.000071, but twice that, right? I get two times as many of these when it, when it ionizes in water. So 0 0.000071 times two, and I'm going to take negative log of that. Okay? So the negative log of twice 0 0.000071 is equal to 3.847. Now this is the pOH because this is the concentration of OH ions, which means the pH is 14 minus that, and we get 10.153. And again, this does make sense. This is a base, and so our pH is expected to be above 7, and it is.